All right, Jet fans. So, um, had 24 hours, a little bit more to cool off. Um, try and do what I usually do. Now, I, I've had a couple of embarrassing moments in my life where I didn't know the business side of football at all. And I uh, basically said things and then later on I was like, wow, how, how could I say that, you know? And I'm going to get to one of those in a minute and I'll explain it. But uh, ever since then, I realized that there's a lot more to football than whether, whether the team wins or loses on a day and, and, and whether, you know, they pay this guy, I don't pay that guy. There's usually a bunch of stuff going on. And once you get to, you really start to look into this stuff, I mean, a lot of this stuff becomes clear. So... I wanted to do last night's stuff on, on the emotion and the anger and the what the F is this team doing kind of thing. But now, you know, I spent the day uh, when I wasn't working looking through different posts on Facebook, looking through different articles, and just kind of getting a feel for what the Jets are doing here. So I think I have it figured out. Now, you may not agree that it's the right move, but it is fairly obvious what the Jets are doing, okay? Okay. Um, the Jets are, for the third time in the last six years, tearing everything down and looking to build it back up. Now, I fully support that decision, but there are a couple of things that go with it. Number one, you have to draft well, which the Jets never do. You have to develop your players, which the Jets never do, and they're certainly not doing it now. And you have to stay the course and be willing to deal with the the fan backlash, the media backlash, and whatever goes along with that. John Idzik tried it in 13 and 14. Um, you know, he, <laughs> he was a miserable drafter, um, bad talent evaluator, and uh, you know, I know people love Rex Ryan, and maybe I'll do a, a thing on Rex Ryan someday, but um, Rex Ryan did not develop players very well either. Um, certainly not on the offensive side. So you mix all of those in, and then... John Idzik did not stay the course because he traded a third round draft pick for Percy Harvin when the Jets were already, I don't remember, they were already like, you know, halfway through the season, headed to nowhere, and he gave up draft capital for a guy who was a free agent at the end of the year. So Idzik screwed it up. Fans went crazy, got him out of there. In comes McCagnin. First year with McCagnin, he's got all kinds of cap money, goes out, and uh, I, I am going to give McCagnin credit for this because. He did it then. He did it again last year, um, but he, you know, he didn't finish the job and he didn't do the other part of it. But McCagnin did not sign guys to long, terrible deals that would kill the team for years. He never did. He always front loaded the contracts. He always had an out after a couple of years. So he was a smart cap guy. Um, but like Idzig, he was a terrible talent evaluator. His drafts were almost as bad and probably worse than Idzig's, and. Um, you know, he didn't have a coach that could do anything for him. Bowles wasn't a great talent developer either, and obviously not on the offensive side. And you need the offense in, these, in today's football with the rules and, and every, every team's winning 45-42, and the Jets are still trying to win 13-10. So McCagnin came in that first year, 2015, loaded up on free agents that, you know, took a couple of years and didn't really keep the contracts, um, you know, hamstring, have, didn't have the contract, contracts hamstring the Jets for very long, uh, and they went 10-6 and six that year. It's the only year the Jets have had a winning year in, in eight years. Um, and McCagnin then had, um, you know, a draft, and then after that, when those contracts were up, tried to, um, you know, rebuild by tearing the team down. Now, one thing people don't realize, and I didn't realize it myself till around the same time as the Percy Harvin thing, um, the NFL has a rolling salary cap requirement. Okay, you are not allowed to just stockpile your money and keep it to the side forever, just like you're not allowed to go over the cap forever. There is a certain percentage that you have to spend on a rolling basis. So in any given four-year period, you have to spend, I think it's 92% of your cap. So if your cap's $100 million, you better spend an average of $92 million each year. So if you want to go 50 million, um, the, you know, whatever year, then you better be spending all of it the next year. I forget the exact numbers. Don't quote me on those. But you do have to maintain a certain percentage of the cap on a four-year rolling basis, okay? So the Jets with Idzik did it, and then McCagnin did it last year, a year before last year, and, um, and then went on a free agent spending spree again. The problem with that whole philosophy is that if you overspend on free agents and they don't do well, and you don't draft well, and you don't develop players, then every three or four years, or two years in this case, you are in a dumpster fire again, just like the Jets are now. So that brings us to Joe Douglas, who, after cutting Le'Veon Bell yesterday, 
And now there's all kinds of rumors that that Crowder and Brian Poole are on the on the on the trade block, and, and even Sam Darnold. There's talk about you know what can the Jets get for Sam Darnold. It is extremely clear that the Jets are no longer even pretending to try to win this year at all. Uh, they are tanking, or as much of it as an NFL team can tank. I'm I'm not going to get into a whole tank conversation here. NFL teams don't actually tank. The front office will put the uh, not give the proper tools, but the players themselves don't tank. But the Jets are what, what most fans call tanking now. There is no doubt whatsoever. They, they have dropped all pretense, uh, and they are completely gutting the team, hoping to get that first pick, and whether or not they draft Lawrence or trade it, whatever the case is, the Jets are loaded for bear. They are, gonna, they are stockpiling draft picks. They are gutting the team. Douglas is getting rid of anybody that was was part of McCagnin's era. Um and then he's going to have salary cap money. Now, the thing with Joe Douglas is there's all kinds of talk and and people say he is not a big free agent guy. He has to spend that money somehow. So my suspicion is that he's going to have to draft well, develop players, which, you know, Adam Gase, not a draft guy. Get, I mean, not a development guy. Get him the hell out of here. Hopefully that'll happen at the end of the year. Um, but then, then um, you know, Douglas is, is going to go for a bunch of mid-level guys that provide depth rather than try for the big score like McHagnon was doing. So rather than your, your Tremaine Johnson and your C.J. Mosley and, and those types of signings, you know, two or three big signings and then scramble to fill in the rest, he's going to use all that cap money for depth, fill in with some pretty good players, second-tier players that provide depth, and then have those guys be the depth instead of them be the stars and try and draft the depth. So... I think what Douglas is going to is going to do is hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, he's going to bring a talent, a, a guy who, who can evaluate talent and develop talent in here, and then draft, have your stud quarterback, your stud this, your stud that, all these young guys that they have all these draft picks with, under cap friendly, team friendly deals for a few years while he you know fills in free agency with depth. So um, I fully support this kind of move. The problem is the Jets never, ever, ever get it right because they can't do anything right. They don't pick the right free agents. They don't pick the right players in the draft. And they do not develop the players they do pick. So all that leads us back to what the Jets are doing now, which is setting it up so that, that they have all of that going on now. Adam Gase is a big wild card here. He is clearly not capable of developing players. Um, he can't even design a game plan for his players. Um, he seems to not want to help out young players. Uh, and, you know, in the case of Le'Veon Bell, he, he didn't even want to do anything for him at all. He just wanted to to show that, that Le'Veon Bell didn't belong on the team. So he didn't like him. He didn't like the deal. So the hell with it. He's not going to he's not gonna bother playing Le'Veon Bell. So um, this is the kind of coach you're dealing with. He's also clearly throws his players under the bus at all times. You know, you get into a press conference. It's never him. It's never his fault. Uh, a leader takes responsibility and says, hey, it's on me. we got to get this fixed. Nope, not him. Well, you know, the play was good, but these guys didn't execute it. And, um, you know, now that the latest thing, I, I, Le'Veon Bell is out, and, and they ask Adam Gase, you know, what, you know, whether or not he feels that he – didn't use Levy on Bell the right way, and Adam Gase's response were, was, it's irrelevant now. Now, Gase was probably saying that what he thinks is irrelevant, but he's such a social moron that it comes off as if to say Levy on Bell not playing is irrelevant. So I understand where he's coming from, but he's just so not capable of social interaction and, and inspiring and leading people that his answer, which was like what I think is irrelevant, which it has to be that, it can't possibly be anything else, comes off the wrong way and he probably further alienates people. So he's not the guy to develop the players you draft. So you have to assume, now that I've calmed down, yesterday I was all over the, you know, it's clearly Joe Douglas is backing Adam Gase and, and we're in a lot of trouble train. Uh, I've jumped off that train after some thought and I think what Douglas is doing is he's just playing out the season. He's he's you know he's probably probably told not to fire Gase. They don't want to pay him and Bowles, who's still on the contract, and another guy. Um, and you know, and at the end of the year, he'll be gone. I can only hope that Douglas has a reputation is as good as it is, is that is that he will have the opportunity to hire a coach. Because if the Jets slip back into that, I'm hiring the coach and you both report to me mode, we're, we're, we're in trouble again. So um, I think now that um, that that's the deal, that, that, that Adam Gase is out, I'm hoping. 
Um, Joe Douglas is breaking this all the way down to make this his team and that if he is half as good as they say he is, he will build this slowly and do it the right way. Um, again, I have been in favor of these types of things all three times it's happened. The Jets, you know, the first two just botched it so badly that, um, and, and that's easily botchable. If you botch that kind of move, you set the franchise back years, and that's what happened with the Jets. So you're probably, you know, probably a couple of years away from the Jets being any kind of real contenders, but you you hope they can at least turn it around and be somewhat competitive and and prepared. That's what that's your first step: competitive and prepared, and then you start to have these kids grow, and then they become, you know, then you become contenders for a year or two they get knocked out and then hopefully you know three four years down the road we are vying for a division title i know it's all rosy rose colored glasses rosy look rosy outlook but um, this is all the only hope we have because the alternative is that joe douglas is as big a moron as as uh, as it appears he is in the eyes of some people right now and uh, we've got five four more years of him and he's, they're not firing him and Gase and everybody, and that, they're basically not going to pay four guys at a time, which is what would happen if they keep firing guys every two years. So we have to hope that the owners will be smart enough to get out of the way. But anyway, that's it. It's just an opinion. Um, f- listen, feel free to, to drop your opinion and yell at me. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. Let's talk, whatever. Put them in the comments, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, good night.